A quick word before we begin. After you have watched this video, I encourage you to watch my other entomology related videos as well by going to my channel playlist and clicking on Entomology Lab. Lots of great videos on entomology there. I also want to encourage you to please consider taking an extra step in supporting me by joining me on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member or just sending me a one-time super thanks apart from a like, subscribe and share. Links are in the description below. By joining me on Patreon or on channel membership, you will gain access to some amazing members-only perks and exclusive benefits that will help you a lot as a student, teacher or a hobbyist. Shown here are some of the perks that you'll enjoy. Again, thanks in advance for your support. Hello and welcome back to another episode on the subject of practical entomology. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to pin and spread a insect specimen that is fairly large in size and with a rather fleshy or bulky abdomen without the need to actually go through the time-consuming process of making incisions and gutting the insect. For this, we'll be using a giant false leaf katydid as an example specimen. To begin the process, you will need the following materials. A special spreading board that looks something like this. You can check out my previous video on how to make a DIY spreading board from Thermocall by clicking on the link to the video in the description below. You will also need number 7 insect pins, which is the largest standard size entomological pin, several fixing pins, some strips of translucent butter paper or tracing paper, thumb forceps and dissecting needles, a 2 or 5 cc syringe with a needle size between 22 to 25 gauge, isopropanol or ethanol of 80 or 90 percent concentration, and of course the specimen, in this case a giant false leaf katydid. This leaf katydid was euthanized with ethyl acetate after collection and had been in the freezer for a good 8 to 9 months since, the main reason being I never had the time to process it. The specimen had been defrosted prior to shooting this video. As you can see, it's still in pretty good shape considering. Freezing the specimen for at least 5 days to a full week is recommended. During this period, all microorganisms present in and on the specimen, including ecto and endoparasites if present, will be killed by the extreme low temperature. This helps to a great extent in mitigating the decomposition, especially in the abdomen, that is bound to occur during the drying process after pinning the specimen. Once the frozen specimen has completely thawed, insert a number 7 insect pin through one side of the pronotum of the prothorax as shown here. Insert the pin all the way down right through the entire thorax, leaving a 1 cm length of the pin protruding above the thorax or pronotum. Now insert the pin right in the middle of the groove of the spreading board until the wings are in level with the surface of the spreading platform. Next, support the body of the specimen by inserting two pins, one on each side of the thorax, so the body doesn't move around when spreading the wings later. Once that's done, carefully lift the forewings or tegmen and rest them on the platform like so. Use fixing pins to fix them in position if need be. Next, lift and spread out the hind wings carefully in the same manner as with the forewings. Insert very thin insect pins such as number one size pins, one each through the costal vein of both hind wings and fix them in position. Now. Take one of the tracing paper strips and lay it on top of the fore and hind wings of one side. Remove the pins used to support the wings and while pressing the paper strip down with one hand, arrange the wings in the final position you want them to remain once dried. Use blunt tip forceps to move the wings up and down if required. Once you have set the wings in the desired position, secure them in place using numerous fixing pins. Do the same with the other pair of wings.
Next, start working your way with the appendages. Using a pair of tweezers, extend the limbs and fix them in the desired position using several fixing pins as shown here. Do this with all the three pairs of limbs. Once that's done, we come now to the most important part of the preservation process. Fill the syringe with 80 or 90% ethanol or isopropanol and inject 1 or 2 ml each of the alcohol at several places within the abdomen. Start from the point where the thorax meets the abdomen. Inject a good quantity of the alcohol into the thoracic interior. Do the same with the middle and then the posterior parts of the abdomen until the abdomen becomes visibly distended and excess alcohol starts leaking from the injection points. When pushing the needle into the abdomen, it is preferable to do so at the thin and soft inner spaces between the abdominal segments. Needle insertion is neat and easy at these points. Once you have thoroughly injected the specimen, the alcohol will immediately begin to work its way into the abdominal tissues and organs and help preserve the overall integrity of the contents to a great extent. This chemical preservation combined with the freezing step we discussed prior will work effectively in at least slowing down putrefaction of the fleshy abdomen to a great extent during the time period between pinning and eventual desiccation or complete drying of the specimen. Do a final round check of your pinned specimen and use more pins here and there if required to make the specimen look as symmetrical and aesthetically pleasing as possible. I should add here that if the specimen is part of a scientific collection, availability of space in the insect drawers would be more of an issue than aesthetics. So what entomologists would normally do in such cases is that they would spread only one side of the wings, leaving the other pair of wings in its natural position. This allows for saving of space while also not compromising with sufficient unhindered access to the abdominal part for study. However, if the insect is to be framed for art or to be used for other such non-scientific purposes, then it would be best to spread both pairs of wings. Coming back to our specimen, once you have done the final rounds, allow the pinned and spread specimen to dry every day under natural sunlight or a tungsten bulb or better still, in a drying oven set at 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. During the drying process, which can take anywhere from a week to two weeks, keep a close eye on your drying specimen and check every day, as small insects such as ants and dermastids would definitely want a bite out of your precious specimen. At the end of a week or two, check the dryness of the specimen by gently poking the abdomen with the blunt end of a pin or forcep to make sure it is hard and rigid. If so, begin unpinning the specimen carefully from the mounting board. And there you have it, your pinned specimen is ready to be used for your project, art or otherwise. If the specimen is however for science, you will need to prepare an appropriate label or labels containing all necessary collection and specimen info in standard size insect labels like the sample shown here. Attach the labels underneath the specimen on the same pinning needle like so. I'll probably be making a video in the future on how a insect label is prepared and what details need to be included in the label. The link to the video will be in the description below. Now that you have attached the label, store the specimen in a standard insect drawer filled with silica gel and some mothballs as shown here. Hope you enjoyed and found this video tutorial helpful. If so, please do like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more such content. 
Also, reiterating what I said at the start, please do consider supporting me on Patreon or channel membership or even just a one-time super thanks of any amount would be greatly appreciated. All relevant links are in the video description below. Thanks again for watching and thanks in advance for your support. See you soon with a brand new video.